everybody. Welcome to Hopeland on a Sunday morning. It's Pastor CG here. I'm really glad that you guys were able to join us today. Um, if you're new here with us, uh, please text the word new, N-E-W, to 323-405-3232. We want to make sure that you stay connected, that you know what's going on. Um, that you can get the whole Hopeland experience. But um, one other thing we want you to do before you jump into the service today is share this. We want everybody to be blessed by what you're gonna experience today. And I know it's a simple click of the button, so just go ahead and share this with your friends and family. Today's gonna be an amazing service. We hope you enjoy it. Check out our worship service. God bless you. to a king What weight or worth could be held within my offering When he alone is worthy A glory song is inscribed upon my heart this treasure held in an alabaster jar I break to bring him all the glory Praise God from whom all blessings flow Sacrifice could be equal to his own. The cross of Christ has declared that there is not I owe, yet I know I owe him more. Oh, praise God.
Come alive, dry bones. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Awake, arise, inhale the light. And come alive, come alive. I'm gonna sing to your dry bones until you're covered in light and the valleys bloom like a rose. Attention, feel the change in the air. For the ground is dry, but the clouds are overhead. Oh, I'm gonna sing it again. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry bones. Come alive, come alive, come alive, dry.
What's up, everybody? I hope you enjoyed the worship. Uh, Pastor Sean here. I'm ready to preach the word. I'm ready to uh, minister to you guys. And so welcome to Hope Land Online. Um, I hope you're having a good time already. So check it out. We're going to dive into the word. New series this month, uh, Tikva. Uh, Tikva. Uh, it is the Hebrew word for hope. So this month is all about hope. Um, and I'm going to open up in prayer and we're going to dive into the word. So Father, we thank you for your word. Uh, we thank you, Father, for your presence. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you, God, for your faithfulness. And, and God, I pray that this month that you would just ignite hope in people. You would stir hope in people. You would give them hope. You would bring hope. God, you would deliver hope. God, you would give revelation of what hope is. I pray in the name of Jesus that we would literally experience hope. Father, I pray that we would, uh, Lord, just get a refreshing and, and, and a fresh revelation of what hope really is, according to your word. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Here we go. Um, I'm going to have you turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 6, verses 18 to 19. So yes, the sermon series this month, Tikva, um, Hope is an Anchor, is the subtitle. And that's what we're going to be going into. Uh, just to give you a little background as to what, starting this sermon series, I have a friend in the LA area. He's a church planner. He's also a skateboarder. And so uh, we've connected here and there, um, just have some common interests. And he was like, hey, man, on our online, can I use one? Since your, your church is called Hope Land, he's like, I'm assuming you have some sort of series on hope. And I was like, as a matter of fact, I don't. Um, so he was like, oh man, you might want to get one being that you calling yourself Hope Land. So anyway, that was kind of like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Um, uh, so we are in it this month. Hope, okay? Hope. Hope is near, to, near and dear to us as a community uh, because of Jesus and specifically, I mean, that's who we are. Uh, this local community, we are Hope Land Church. And in the reason, I shared this when we first launched Hope Land, but uh, when, when we met with our team about kind of coming up with a name for our church, I was like, man, I just feel in my heart and my spirit that hope has to be in the name. Uh, my story, my personal journey with God, my personal journey in the kingdom of God and my walk with Jesus and my life prior to knowing Jesus has been and is a story of hope. So I'm sure I'll share some of that uh, today as well, just or, or, or during this month. But let's go into the word. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 and 19. Here it is. It's talking about um, God making a promise to Abraham and that he basically uh, made a, God made a promise to himself. He swore by himself because nobody else could live up to it. So he did it himself. Okay. And so that's what it's saying here. Hebrews 6, verse 18 and 19. It says that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, he promised Abram, um, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope. Everybody say hope. To lay hold, lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Say this with me, everybody. Say hope is an anchor, okay? Hope is an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast and which enters the presence, capital P, the presence of God behind the veil. It's speaking metaphorically of the temple and how uh, uh, the, our hope is, is literally connected to God in, in, in his presence, okay? So here we go. I'm just gonna jump right in and give you some points here, but this scripture pretty much says it all. We're going to dive into this verse and really look at it. And I really want to just teach you some things today. We got all month to talk about hope. So I wanted to take some time to really teach you about the, the, the name, the Hebrew definition, and, um, and our subtitle. You know, hope is an anchor. Here in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, it explicitly says, right, this hope we have as an anchor for the soul. All right? Praise the Lord. So first point is this, in Christ you possess hope. Why? How do I know that? It's all over the book, but in this verse, this hope we have. Look at somebody, if you're with somebody, or say it to yourself, I have hope. 
okay? Say this with me. Say, in Christ, I possess hope, okay? This hope we have as an anchor for the soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, all right? I just want to talk about hope today, okay? This whole month, really. But, um, you know, um, first point, once again, in Christ, you possess hope, all right? My second point is this, hope is in God's presence. If you get in God's presence, you're going to experience hope. When you get in God's presence, you're going to have a greater understanding of hope. When you get in God's presence, you're going to receive hope. You might feel hopeless or discouraged or frustrated or how's this going to happen or how am I going to get through this or get over this? And I want to tell you today that the, that hope is in Christ and in Christ you possess it. It is in you uh, by way of the Holy Spirit. It is in you and you are in it by way of his presence. In Christ you possess hope. Hope is in God's presence. If you ever lack hope, church, if you ever feel like you're miss, you're, you're, you're feeling hopeless or the reality of your life, you might feel that you are hopeless. I'm here to tell you right now that you possess hope and you, if you get in God's presence, you will experience hope. All right. Hallelujah. Here it is. I just want to give you some definitions now, okay? I just want to give you some definitions. So in the English language, it's it's not as strong of a word. And the way we use it in our language at times isn't really the true biblical definition of hope. I think we kind of watered it down in the English language a little bit, and it's become something that is not necessarily the biblical definition. So this is literally the English definition of the word hope. And it means a feeling or desire for a certain thing to happen, okay? Like, man, I'm hoping. I hope I can do that. I hope that I get through this. And it's like a, it's a wish. It really means to wish, to want something to happen. Um, it's like, man, I'm hoping. I, I hope. And um, it's not necessarily, by definition, founded in in faith. You know, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for. So here it is. Um, Hope and faith go together. Like they're they're very, they're almost, and I know they're different, but they're they're closely connected. And so my point is this, is that hope just isn't some wish for something. And I'm talking biblical hope. It's not like, man, I hope I can, I hope I get that car. I hope I get this for Christmas. Or, you know, as kids, they'll, they'll talk like that. Okay, it's a, it's a wish, but but hope biblically totally different in the Greek. In the Greek, we just read out of the New Testament. In the Greek, it's ex- expectation for what is sure or certain. Okay, so biblical hope, the hope that comes from God, the hope that is in the presence of God, and the hope that you possess in Christ, it is an expectation for what is sure. It's not just a wish. It's not just a desire. It's closely related to faith, okay? So it's an expectation of what is sure. We call ourselves Hopeland because we want to impart faith in people. We want them to know that in Christ, there is hope. There is an expectation of something greater and better than where you are right now. There is hope to come out of what you've been in. There is hope in in for freedom. There is hope for forgiveness. There is hope for healing. There is hope for salvation. There is hope for breakthrough. There is hope for victory. There is hope for for faith. There is hope for even uh, soundness of mind and stability of soul. There is hope by definition in the Greek, expectation of what is sure or certain, okay? We as believers, when we hope, we've got this hope in Christ and we receive this hope in the presence of God, it is an anchor, okay? Anchors don't move very easily. Anchors are fixed. 
Anchors are weighty. Anchors hold things down, right? They, they provide stability in the shaking of things. That is hope. Hope is not weak. Hope is not just a wish. Hope is not just a desire. Hope is in Christ and hope is in the presence of God and hope is an expectation in your spirit for what you're believing for, what is in your future. It's an expectation for what is sure. All right, so that is the Greek definition of the word hope. I wanna give you the Hebrew definition. That's where we get the word tikva. Everybody say that with me, say tikva. All right, uh, next time the devil tries to <laughs> discourage you, tries to lie to you, tries to push you down, tries to deceive you, bring doubt and unbelief, you just gotta shout tikva, right? Just say it loud, hope, hope, hope. I have hope in Christ, tikva, right? Just say it loud, say it proud, and, and, and tell the devil where to go, right? Because we have hope as an anchor for the soul, all right? Here it is. Here's the Greek definition, sorry, Hebrew definition, tikva. Say it with me again, say tikva. Look at somebody and say tikva, right? When you're discouraged, tikva, hope, hope. All right, here we go. This is it. This is what it means. That actually, it means a chord, okay, a chord, uh, 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 a cord, um, some sort of uh, rope fastened together that is holding. So it's hence that the, the 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 correlation in the New Testament in Hebrews as an anchor, because it means tigva is a cord. Okay, the first use of that word was when um, Rahab tied the scarlet cord, tikva, outside her window, okay? So her hope, okay, her hope, and she got out of where she was. She wasn't supposed to be hanging out with some, with, with God's people, and she was a prostitute, and because she served God's people and helped them, God got her out of there. Okay, and she's in the lineage of Christ. My goodness, hope. She got up out of that mess. Jericho, the whole city came tumbling down. The walls came down. She was living in that wall, but she was spared. Somebody say hope. Okay, cord, cord, expectation. Once again, Greek and Hebrew, very closely related. I just wanted to call the sermon series Tikva because I think it's a cool word. And um, I personally, I love the Hebrew language. I love that. You know, I love the, the the depth of it and all that's in it. It's it's a beautiful language, um, and it's you know our the Old Testament it was written in it. So expectation and hope. Okay, it comes from the Hebrew root word kava, meaning to bind together. So hence the word um, hence the word cord or bind together. Right, that's what it is. Uh, kava meaning to bind together, collect, um, um, to expect to tarry, to wait for, to wait on, to wait upon. So it has this notion, okay, that there's expectation, but I'm waiting, okay? So that's why it is hope, because it has not happened in the natural. It has not manifested in the natural realm. I. It is not a reality yet, but... I am expecting and waiting. I am not depressed in the waiting. I'm expectant in the waiting. I am not hopeless in the waiting. I am hopeful in the waiting. I am expectant and I am tied, okay? I am fastened, all right? I am bound together to what I'm believing that God is gonna do in my future. I am connected. It is a cord, an anchor that goes into the presence of God that connects me to what God is gonna do in my future, all right? So that is what it is, okay? So the English definition, it's kind of abstract, kind of touchy-feely, kind of emotional maybe, and I think sometimes when we use it in the English language, when we say, man, I'm hoping it's, it's many times it's, it's an emotional response. I'm not saying all the time, but you get the difference here that even by definition and use, 
Hebrew language, totally different than the English language. Okay, so so um, this this woven cord, I mean the strength. The Bible says that a threefold cord is not easily broken. All right, um, this is hope. Hope is strong. Hope is within your grasp, like a cord. You can grab it now. It's connected to something that you haven't gotten to yet, or it hasn't gotten to you, but your hope is sure and steadfast, and you're anchored to it. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen out there in, on, on, in our online community. So it's a bound cord, a rope, okay, or thread, all right? The easy way to remember this is hope is a rope, okay? <laughs> hope is a rope. It's a cord. It is fastened to something. God's presence is not moving. We are anchored to Christ. We are anchored to his promises. We are anchored to what he has said he's going to do. We are anchored in his word. We are anchored in what he has said. We are not anchored in anything or anybody else, but our hope is tied to him. Okay? All right? And so it's within our grasp. It isn't some abstract kind of, I hope it happens. Hope, sure, it's steadfast, it's an anchor, and we are tied to that thing. We are fastened to it. We are holding to it, all right? So um, it is something, once again, that we can grasp and hold um, with our hands, okay? In other words, hope is something real enough that we can cling to it. We can cling to it, all right? Hope is not something it's, that's out of reach, okay? That, that is not biblical hope, okay? And so here's my third point, is, is hope is within your grasp. Hope is within your grasp. Hope is now, okay? Uh, the Bible says now faith is, okay? It's now, it's right now. Well, I'm not there yet. Well, if it's there, there's no need for hope. It, you're not there or it's not here or whatever it is that God has dropped in your spirit, that God has given you, whatever vision, dream, revelation, prophetic word spoken over your life, something God specifically just spoke to you about, uh, that right there you are believing for, you are pressing into God uh, for now, now faith is, okay? What now faith is? The substance, the substance of things hoped for, hoped for. Because if, if, if it's happened, there's no need to hope for it, right? But, but it is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hope is within your grasp. Hope was within your grasp. The thing, the manifestation is not, but hope is, okay? Whatever God has said he's gonna do, he's gonna do. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion, okay? He will perfect that which concerns you. He will bring it to pass. Our job is to hold on to that rope, right? Hope is a rope. Hold on to that cord, that thing in your spirit that you know. You know, you, you know that you can know things by the spirit. You can just know it. I know it. And it's not coming yet, but I know it will. I know it. I know it in my spirit, in my heart. I know God's going to move. I know he's up to something. I know the breakthrough's coming. I can sense it. I can smell it, right? I can feel it, right? And I'm speaking on spiritual terms here, okay? I mean, I just, I know. Now faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Tikva, all right, is a cord. It is a cord. It is a cord. It is expectation for what is sure and certain, okay? All right, hope is within your grass. So I want to encourage you in your walk with God to lay hold of it, to lay hold of that hope, stir up that hope. You know, and the Bible says, and I'm just going to, I just want to give you some practical things here. Okay. That, um, because our emotions will be contrary to hope at times. 
right? Our condition, our situation is contrary to hope. It's contrary to hope. It's, 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 it's disagreeing with what God has said at times. It feels contrary. Literally, you're like, this does not look like what God said, right? This does not look like what I sense in my spirit. And um, the, the practical application is here. Practical and spiritual is get in the presence of God. Worship God. Seek the Lord. That is where hope is. How do we know that? Hebrews, right? We just read it. We just read it in Hebrews chapter six, verse 18 to 19. Okay, this hope we have, this hope we have. You might not have the thing, but you have hope. You might not have what you're believing for yet, but you have hope. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, okay? Both sure and steadfast and which enters God's presence behind the veil right? So hope isn't something on the outside just because something happened. I have hope. No, you have hope because of God's presence and because the Holy Spirit has made residence within you. The hope of God is in his presence. You get in his presence and hope will be stirred in your soul. Hope is within your grasp, okay? So the word hope, check it out. This word hope in, in the Bible, it's found uh, mostly in the book of Psalms and Job, okay? No wonder. Look at what Job went through, lost everything. Hope is in the book of Job and Psalms more than anything. Psalms is written, uh, there's songs, it's worship, and there's a lot of moments of of the psalmists, when they wrote these, they were not in the best of situations, okay? So it's no wonder, of course, hope is in Job and in Psalms more than anything, right? Because in our humanity and in life, there are gonna be valleys, there are gonna be struggles, there are gonna be trials, there are gonna be uh, tribulations, there's gonna be persecutions, there's gonna be bad things happening to good people and good things happening to bad people, right? Like this, in this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good courage because Jesus has overcome the world. So this is the point of hope, right? Like hope is, is beautiful. Why? Why? What is so great about hope? about this core, this anchor, is because hope, I mean, you just read the Bible, read Psalms, read Job, right? Read those books, hope is in the struggle. I mean, that's where you find hope. You know, that's where hope is, right? Hope lives and thrives in the deep. I mean, think about it, it is an anchor. Anchors sink deep and settle in deep places, right? That's where hope is, right? That's what hope does. So hope stabilizes us when things are shifting, shaking, and sifting. It is the anchor of the soul. The reason why even Christ followers find themselves emotionally, mentally, and spiritually all over the place is they've let go of that anchor. They've let go of hope. They let go. And they, it, when the devil pulled them out. The devil deceived them. Satan came in and tempted them they let go of that anchor and they are unstable because they're not anchored, right? And you can be anchored. You can be planted. You can be settled in all the all the will and, and the word of God. You can be settled. You can be rooted. You can be anchored in Christ. You don't have to be a wishy-washy Christ follower that you love God and you're, and you're, and you're saved, and but you just can't get it together. You got to hold on to that rope, man. You got to hold on to that cord that, that you, you hope is an anchor, right? And so hope, this is the beauty. It's in Psalms and Job. Why? Because hope is for our humanity. We need hope. We need hope on this side of glory. Am I right? I mean, these three remain, right? 
faith, hope, and love. I mean, hope's in the big three. You know what I'm saying? It's in the big three. These three remain. Now, the greatest is love. We'll talk about that another month. But hope is up in there, right? Hope is up in there. Hope is for our humanity. Hope is for us to believe for others when we see their humanity. Hope is when you walk out the door and you see what's really going on in your life. Hope is for that, that we can believe for something. Love, the Bible says, love, one of the definitions of love. We've been going through love with our kids, right? Because they need the love of Jesus and so do their parents. Um, but we're going through actually the fruit of the spirit. And so this week is love. It's the fruit of love. And my wife's got these little cards. She goes over with them uh, during breakfast. And uh, she's been going through love. Love is patient. Love is kind. And one of them in there, right, is hopes all things. Hopes that we, we are, look, if you're a part of Hopeland Church, I'm telling you right now, there's hope. There's hope. We got we to gotta be people of hope. We got to be people that it don't matter. We don't have to, we shouldn't look at people when, when things are bad and be like, oh my goodness, what are we going to do? You know, um, I understand the realities of situations, but we are those that are not without hope, people of God. Can I get a witness? All right. So hope is for our humanity. Okay. Here's another one. Hope is found most prevalent and relevant in the valley. Hope is found most prevalent and relevant in the wilderness. Hope is found most prevalent and most relevant in a pandemic. Hope is found most prevalent and relevant in, in, in social unrest. Hope is found most prevalent and most relevant in the tough times. Hope is found, all right, most prevalent and most relevant in unfavorable circumstances. That is where hope is. That is where hope is. It doesn't matter how far things sink. It doesn't matter how bad things get. Hope will be found there. Am I, am I right? Come on, somebody. So here it is. Hope is weighty. Hope is weighty. Okay, it sinks and settles to the lowest parts of life's journey. Can I get an amen? I don't care how bad it gets, there's hope down in there. There's hope at the bottom. I tell you what, it doesn't matter how far you go. You know, the Bible even says, if you, the Bible says this, right? If you make your bed in Hades, he is there. Like God, you can sink deep to the depths of whatever. And there is hope, okay? There is a rope extended down to the pit of your despair, to the, to the pit of your sin, to the depths of, of, of depravity, of poverty, of, of, of perversion, of lust, the depths of whatever sin. I mean, look at the prodigal son. He went deep into sin. He, he, he left his father's house, but it was a rope extended that he grabbed onto and it pulled him out of, of eating with pigs on a farm. I mean, he, he came up out. Hope pulled him out, all right? So hope is weighty. It sinks and settles. It's an anchor. Hope is an anchor. It sinks and it settles. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how bad it gets, how bad you feel, how deep even maybe your mind will take you into depression, into anxiety or fear, Hope is found in the low places. That is where hope settles. Do you know what I'm saying? That is where hope is. That is where you can't go anywhere or do anything and there not be hope present. Hallelujah. Here it is, my next point. My next point. Hope is found in the struggle. Hope is found in the struggle, okay? That is where uh, it is found. That is where um, God will touch you and reach you. And in my personal walk with God, that is the story of me coming to know Jesus. Um, there wasn't much hope. There was none outside of Jesus. 
when I got saved as a teenager. It was getting, going from bad to worse. I was lost in my sin. I was a troubled teenager from being sexually molested as a child, uh, from coming up in environments in my home, the divorces, the police over the house, the abuse, the drugs, the um, instability, the, I mean, it was, it was bad, right? And it was like, what is going to become of my life? You know, and when I met Jesus, down in the depths of what I was in as a, as a young person, there was a rope extended, a cord, tikva, pulled me up out of there. God pulled me up out of it. It is found in the struggle. And if what God has done for you, we need and must do for others. What God has done for you, what God has pulled you out of, God wants to use you to pull others out of their stuff. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Once again, church, hope is found in the struggle. Okay, so back in Hebrews 619, it says that hope is an anchor, both sure and steadfast. I want to give you the definitions of those words because this really describes what we've been talking about. But by definition, um, the word sure in the Greek, it means something that um, cannot be tottered or cast down. Okay, you understand? So so when you're, there's hope in the spirit, when you got hope, when, when, it, when it is alive in you, the Bible says we have been begotten again. It's talking about being born again unto a living hope. Hope is in our grasp. Hope is ours. Hope in the spirit, in Christ, you have rightful access to hope. Hope, hope isn't something um, that you hope for, right? In, in, in the English sense of the word, you grab it, hold on. You have a right to it. You have a right to it in Christ. You have a right to be secure in what God is doing and what he's going to do in your life. You have a right to that in Christ. You have rights in Christ. Okay, it's secure. This is what the word sure means. This is hope. It is Hope is secure because it's on solid footing. It's built on what does not totter, fall, or slip. It does not totter, fall, or slip. It's unfailing. This is what sure means. Safe, reliable, and trustworthy. That's what hope is. Hope is not a wish. Hope is stable. Hope is sure. Hope can be trusted, right? What God said, you can trust it. That's hope. Hope is an expression of trusting God and believing what he said and not allowing the devil to get you totter off what knock you off of what you're standing on on the word of god here's here's the word steadfast it says it's both sure both 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 of these both sure and steadfast this is powerful here the word steadfast it means to walk where it is solid that's what it means it means to walk hope is expectation and you are so expectant it is such a truth in your spirit, in your heart, that hope empowers you to continue on your journey with God. Hope, hope is that core, connects you to God's presence, connects you to purpose, connects you to destiny, connects you to what he's called you to do, connects you to the steps he's ordered. You are, you are fastened. It is within grasp. You, and it is, it is something you can walk on where it is solid, okay? It's sure enough to walk on. It is, at, this, is but this is the definition, absolutely dependable, giving, guaranteed support and security, okay? That is what, what it means what we, can, what we can tread on. So what is this? What is this saying? Is that it empowers us to walk this walk with God. That's hope. Hope is I have such an assurance that I can continue, that I don't uh, become paralyzed with fear. I don't get off course with anxiety. I don't become paralyzed by depression and oppression. But the hope that Christ gives is a spiritual 
power and strength in Christ that empowers me to keep moving forward. This is what hope is. This is tikva. Okay, here it is. I got two more verses and and we're going to close. But Hebrews 10, 23. Here it is. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast. There it is. It's in grasp. The confession of our what? Hope. Hold fast. Confession is not just verbal words. It also is related to your lifestyle, your mode of living. Okay, your confession is is, is the way you live, your lifestyle. So let us hold fast to the confession of our hope that, that let, us, let us live our life and hold fast to hope. Let us, let us walk this out and not get off course. Look at, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering, no tottering. We're on sure, we're standing on, on sure footing, right? For he who promised is faithful. Here it is. I want you to memorize this verse. Okay, this week. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Here's my last point. Fight to keep hope alive. I know it sounds kind of cheesy. You know what I'm saying? But that point. But fight. It's holding fast. You got to hold fast. You got to fight for it. You got you got to scrap to hold on to that hope. You do. Come on now. It wouldn't be hope if, if hope is in the valley, and the valley is troublesome. Wilderness is troublesome. Bad situations troublesome. Trials, tr- struggles, whatever. Hope is there, but you got to grab onto that thing. You got to hold on to that. You got to hold on to that word. You got to hold on to what God said. You got to hold on. You got to stay faithful to what God's called you to do. You got to stay faithful when it's painful. That's what it is. Here it is. Last verse, and I'm going to pray. Hebrews chapter three, verse six. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house we are, if we, here it is, hold fast, hold fast, hold fast. The confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Hallelujah. You have to fight to keep hope alive. Hold fast to what God has said. Do not let it go be fully persuaded that what God has promised, he's fully able to bring to pass. I'm telling you, God is able. It says right here, what he promised, he is faithful to complete. Hallelujah. Father, I pray right now for everybody in the name of Jesus. I pray you stir hope in them. I pray they lay hold of hope. I pray they don't let go. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, that they would so get a revelation of hope right where they are, that in everything you've told them, I pray you would give them the spiritual strength and stamina to lay hold of what you promised and that they will see what you have said come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, I break the power of every devil that would try to attack them, that would try to bring doubt, unbelief, depression, anxiety, or fear, I rebuke those things. I command the devil to shut up and go from God's people in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, God, that we have been been gotten again unto a living hope. We are saved. We are filled. We are whole in you, God. And we thank you for the hope of the gospel dwelling in our spirits in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're out there and you haven't accepted Jesus to be Lord of your life, I want to lead you in a prayer right now. And I just want you to join with me and just repeat this simple prayer and say, Jesus, I come to you, a sinner. I ask you to forgive me. Wash away my sins. I confess you to be Lord of my life. Save me, Jesus. I am yours in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Congratulations. Um, I'm excited for you. That's your most important decision you will ever make in your life. And I want to send you a simple Bible study. It's, um, 
It's uh, about just taking your, your steps with God on this journey with Jesus. And if you want that, we'll send it to you digitally. Simply text the word GROW to 323-405-3232. Once again, text GROW to 323-405-3232. Hey, Hopeland Church, it is Jocelyn and it is offering time. I like to start off by sharing a verse with you all and that's Leviticus 27, verse 30. So the verse says, every tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the trees is the Lord's. It is holy to the Lord. So what this verse is telling us is that we can show our gratitude to God for what he blesses us with by giving back to him. You know, tithes and offerings is not something that CG or Pastor Sean made up or that the church made up. It's something that's in God's word. So let's try to honor that and give our part to God. I'd like to go ahead and let you guys know that if you do want to give, you can text the word Hopeland to the number 77977. Right now, if you can please join me, I'd like to go ahead and pray for the tithe and offering. Father, we come to you today just to thank you for another day of life, for allowing us to be here today, listening to your word and learning more about you. I pray that you help us be good stewards with the things, the resources and the relationships that you have put under our care, Father. I also come and pray for wisdom for those that are going to be handling this money that is given to you, Lord, that they may use it to continue growing your kingdom. I also pray for blessings over those that are giving today, that you may just protect them, Father, and provide to them as you say that you will do in your word. In the name of Jesus, I pray, amen. All right, two announcements, folks. We just wanna to continue to share uh, about our hope groups. It's been going amazing. We got women's group, uh, men's group, outreach group, prayer group. Um, I think there's another group out there. What is um, young adult group? Yes, we got groups. So um, get out there. Those of you that are in there and, and, and attending, awesome, continue. Um, we sent out an email to everybody in the groups. Just we're going to send it out if we haven't already, just to get any feedback, any input you have. We want to hear any stories, anything that God has done in your life. Uh, please respond to that. Let us know. Uh, no pressure, but if you got something to share, maybe to make us better or just something that blessed you as a result of your group, please share it. We'd love to hear it. We want to know what we're doing is actually working. Um, so once again, if you want to just jump in, and you're, you're not aware that we have groups, you can jump in. Um, any group uh, that, that, is, that is going on right now for the most part. So unless they've maxed out on their, on their number, uh, but um, uh, you just simply text the word groups to 323-405-3232. And, um, and jump in there and, um, and yeah, let's, let's get connected here. Um, and then second announcement is Growth Track. And so Growth Track is the front door of our church. If you wanna just learn more about Whole Plan, um, you wanna just uh, get connected with some of our leaders that teach it, um, it's, it's a four uh, session Bible class really, but it's a lot of it is just about our community and kind of the, the culture of this particular church. Uh, we go through some of what we believe scripturally. Um, we talk about some of the history of our church and how we came to be, um, our vision, mission, our core values, all those kind of things. And then those that want to join the serve team, you can join online. You, you can serve online. You don't have to just serve in person. So if you're thinking about, man, I'd love to be a part of this community, uh, we, you can help with our online uh, services, hosting our services, you, you can, um, and that kind of thing. Um, and then there's other other things uh, through, we use through digital media and social media, that there are other ways you can engage and participate and join our team other than serving in person on the weekend. So uh, if you want to learn more, um, just, text the word next because if you want to take the next step and hopeland other than just participating in the service and the gatherings growth track is your next step so text next to 323-405-3232 god bless 
Thanks for joining us today. I hope you guys enjoyed the service. Uh, just remember, if you want to stay connected and stay up to date with all things Hopeland, follow us on our social media accounts. We, we post pretty regularly to keep you updated, but we hope that you have an awesome week and we'll see you next Sunday. Say hello to my little friend. Let's roll. Let's do it. Let's do the do the do.